knows though. That, that's okay with me because, I mean, I don't know what I said, but God knows. Okay? Uh, I have a problem with that. And, they, and here's what they call it. They say, well, when I speak in tongues, I am speaking the language, the language that angels talk in. That's, that's what I'm saying. And they have one verse in the Bible. They have one verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. So what they're saying is, that what they're saying is, is that Paul's teaching us that when, when, we, when, when, when they speak in tongues, that they're speaking the angelic secret language, that nobody knows what it is. That doesn't come from the Bible. That, that doctrine, that teaching, does not come from the Bible. It's not there. Number one, it assumes, it assumes that angels have a secret language that nobody on earth knows. That's what it assumes. And you won't find that in the Bible anywhere. In fact, let's look at some examples. Uh, we have the two angels that visited Lot, and when they spoke to Lot, did he understand them? Yeah, yeah, he understood. We have the angel Gabriel that came to visit Mary and, and tell her that she was going to have the Christ. And when, when he came, did, did Mary understand what he was saying? Yeah. Then we have the, the shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said, And the shepherds were going, Oh, praise the Lord. I don't know what he said, but oh, that just, oh, that just filled me with the Spirit. That's not what happened. The angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. You're not going to find, you're not going to find anywhere in the Bible where God's angels, his ministering spirits, have a secret land, and no, no one's ever heard him say it. You're not going to find it in the Bible. It's not there. But I do know something that is in the Bible. I do know that consistently, without fail in the Bible, when God um, confuses languages, it's not a blessing. It's a curse. It's not good. When people... When in the Tower of Babel, in the Tower of Babel, when, when they're working together to try to build their own plan of salvation, God didn't, God didn't say, you know what, uh, this is so great. Uh, you know, I'm going to bless them for that. I, I'm going to give them tongues. That's not what he did. He said, we, we have to put a stop to this. So he confused their languages. And none of the angels... None of the angels have ever been recorded as speaking in something where nobody understood what they're saying. In fact, rather the opposite, Psalm chapter 19, the Bible says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. He's referring to the angelic realm. Uh, day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. In other words, God has a way of speaking uh, through his angels to everybody so that everybody understands. There is, God did not give you a super secret mystical angelic language that you don't have a clue what you're saying. God didn't do that. Where did it come from? Remember, God said, I'm going to send you as a form of judgment. I'm going to send you a nation. Uh, they're going to come in as swift as an eagle, okay? And we understand that now. That by the, and these eagles, these fowls are going to come in, and what they're going to do? They're going to snatch away the Word of God so that you cannot be fruitful. Wow, uh, hasn't that already happened a time or two in our life? But he said these, these devils, these spirits are going to come in. Their language you're not going to understand. 
Let's go back in history a little bit to a guy, you, I don't know if you know anything about this guy. I, I stumbled upon this and I think God led me to it several years ago. And I'm reading this again and I'm going, I, I know what that is. I get it. Okay. Introduce you to a man by the name of John D. Now we dealt with this guy briefly uh, in a video we did called uh, Prophets of the New Order. Uh, John D. mentored or had an influence upon uh, Sir Francis Bacon and uh, Bacon and Rosicrucianism and everything like that uh, prospered in the, in the days of uh, around 1600 and so on and that a whole movement, those ideas uh, were pushed into Freemasonry and they came over to this country. I mean, so that, so, it, but it all goes back to a guy by the name of John D., uh, who was an occultist. Uh, he was uh, the sort of mathematician and an advisor to Queen Elizabeth I. And we're talking, um, you know, I can't remember the 1500s, somewhere around in there. Anyway, John D. got up, got hooked up with a guy by the name of Edward Kelly. And Edward Kelly, um, Edward Kelly was really, really good at doing what's called scrying. Now, scrying is done in different ways. You ever seen a crystal ball? That's scrying. Or a gazing bowl. A lot of Wiccans, a lot of witches, a lot of New Agers. New Agers will uh, you'll have crystals and things like that. Uh, scrying is done in Harry Potter. Scrying is done in the Lord of the Rings. You know, those great Christian stories You know that everybody knows about. Um, but any scrying is basically gazing into a, a mirrored object like a like a bowl of water or a scrying bowl or a lake or a sea because the gods down in there down in the sea down in the water you get that Revelation 13 go read it but anyway they gaze into this thing and they see this oh 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 mirror mirror on the wall who's the fairest of them all. That is scrying. That's what that is. And Edward Kelly was really good at it. Okay? Well, John D. and Edward Kelly got together and they started scrying and they came in contact with these angels. And they really are angels. They're just evil ones. Okay? They all have swastikas on their arm. All right? And they smoke cigars and stuff like that. Anyway, okay, so they're evil angels. And uh, John D. and Edward Kelly got in touch with them and they found out that these angels, these bad, wicked angels, found out that they had their own language. A language that nobody knew. Okay? Nobody knew this thing. It's been written about in the angelical language. Um, these angels, these spirits, these familiar spirits that John D. and Edward... In fact, by, by the way, let me, let me just do this. Okay? I, I like to contrast the occult world with God's world, okay? Um, this right here is the only mirror that I really need to know what the future is, what my future is, how I need to conduct my life, the advice, the counsel that I get. This is the mirror right here, okay? Um, this is the Word of God. And there are people who stare into a scrying bowl and go into a trance and they see that they're in contact with a familiar spirit. And I'm telling you, why would you waste time doing that when you could just open up the pure Word of God and go, oh, there it is right there. Okay, well, anyway, back to the story. So... John D. and Edward Kelly got it from these angels, that these angels had a secret language that nobody knew. And they told them, now this is not in the Bible, they told them that this secret language was the original language, was the sacred holy language that God used to create the universe. That God had this special magical language that when he spoke all of these words, these magic words in this special language, that when he did that, then he created his, his universe around him. And that's, that's how he did it. So they say this, this language that men don't know, okay, was the holy language of God that he used. It had magic power in it. And they said that Adam, now, now get this, Adam knew this language originally. And he spoke it, this secret top secret broadcasting language that nobody knows. He used this language to name the animals and give them life. Stop right here. 
several months ago, and I read this.